Namaste. Welcome to the Sunday, October 17th Bon Bliss Members Lesson. We are going to be playing a lot in Malcones. Malcones, one of the most ancient Indian ragas. I've got my tambora set, first string on should ma. Make sure that your first string of your tambora or tamboras is our tune to should ma. First note, or the first phrase of my lap almost always comes to a long saw, okay? I either just play a long saw, probably with an ornamental note to start it, or a phrase like I just did, Donnie saw, that comes to saw. All right, quick scale review, saw, komolga, shudma. Komal da, komal ni, sa. All right, if you've never worked on your komal notes, what I was teaching yesterday was we just took our mall cones, but we made everything should, sa ga ma da ni sa all should, and that's being a shudja. So if you just want to practice it, being a shudja, but for now, listen to the notes understand what I'm teaching later on you'll have your choice play everything should play everything comal all should being a shudja all comal malcones the concept will remain the same a lop in any raga that you play same basic structure different notes same basic structure same basic feeling in that it's slow and mellow and there's not rhythm okay The long lines that I have written out are just to demonstrate relatively how long to hold the note. If it's a long line, then you hold it a long time. If it's a short line, don't hold it quite so long. It's not precise. Okay, so I have what I'll consider a long line after the saw. So hold that saw as long as you can. Let it fade out in volume. Our notes, we don't want them, if this is volume, y-axis, and this is time, x-axis, we don't want our notes just dropping off a cliff, generally speaking. We want them to fade out, all right? Or even really fade out really nicely into nothingness. All right, you can consider that your ornament at the end of the note. You're ornamenting the note by not just truncating the note. You're letting it nicely fade out. All right, so da sa ni. The three notes here are just ni ni sa. All right, we're just going to make each note sound a little bit nicer by doing something to it. Da sa ni, okay? It's round. Da sa ni. Da sa ni. Sani Sani Sa. Now that Sa doesn't have an ornament showing. That means you should use some nice mean to get from knee to Sa. Connection between the notes. Instead of just lifting your fingers straight off the flute, which would be like going in a piano from this note to that note, we're going to gently lift our fingers up, kind of like a wave, so that the sound, the pitch, we go through all the the infinity of pitches of notes between knee and saw. That mean comes in part from our breath. As we move up the scale, we have to blow harder. From komal knee to saw, we have to blow a little bit harder. 
So we just smoothly start to blow harder. All right, you're not gonna be able to think about all these things consciously, but that's what's happening. You're to get nicely up from knee to saw, your fingers have to come up in a wave-like manner and your breath has to slowly or consistently and smoothly blow harder. And we're going to fade out nicely at the end of the note. And we're going to concentrate on how nice our sound is, our tone. All right, all of this when we're improvising a lot or a lot is improvised. Okay, so I don't expect you to memorize this page and play it verbatim like that. When I play a lot, I'm just going to make it up. All right, these are just some sample example phrases. And the basic, the basic flow that we're going to do, as always in a lot, or usually, is we're starting at saw. We're going to go into the low notes. We're going to return to saw. We're going to go up the scale to high saw. And that means we've arrived at our entre. That's what we're doing on this page. We're just getting up to the entre. Then we'd continue into the high notes. And then return back to high saw and then descend to saw and end the law. So on this page, we just, we go down below saw, back to saw, up to high saw for our, to start our entre. And that's all I've written out. The rest, you'll just keep going up into the high notes above high saw, back to high saw, and then down to saw. All right. Second phrase. I put these commas here, meaning that it's a new phrase. So you're probably going to breathe before you play it and breathe after it whenever you see the next comma. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this because I can see that you can't see these too well. All right, let me try to move this stuff out of the way. Sorry, these may block your view of everything. All right, it won't let me move this out of the way. What you want, consciously, continuously breathe outward. All of that happens in one breath. You can think about, if you're if you're new to ornaments or having trouble with ornaments, just look at each note by itself. Make sure you can do it. Dasani. Make sure that comes out. And then Dani, so an ornament from below. And then Dani, and then Sani Sa. But it's got to all be in one breath. It's got to all be fluid. No hurry. Next phrase, end of the first line. Sunny, 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 da. All right, there's no ornament written to start the da, so it comes smoothly down from the knee to the da. And then I've got a waver, slight undulant, that's a waver. So you can, you can do that with your breath. You can rotate the flute a little bit. Ideally, all together to get a little waver of the pitch. You can do it with your finger a little bit. Now, when I put an undulin on a comal da, I usually play the comal da like that. That's usually the only time that I play a comal da like that. Most of the time I'm playing Kumbhada like that. Okay? 
I usually play Kummel Dial like that. But I get a little bit more control, especially if I'm coming on the Undolin from above to come down like that. My finger has a little bit more motion control. Alright, all the ornaments were from above except for the final one from below. Alright, so that was the start of the second line. Now, I'm going to go down to the lowest note I can hit. The Shid Ma. Alright, the lowest note I can hit in Malcolm's. Alright, Sada. Again, with a waver. You don't have to do the waver, but if you can, try to get it. Just a slight waver. Okay, not a huge one. And then down, so I'm going to go Sada. And then Shid Ma. I'm going to play my 7th hole and roll the flute inwards to me. And tilt look a little bit up flute turn my head a little bit and that'll help me get down from what normally would be a teaver ma all the way down to the should ma i'll play the whole second line Shidma, let it fade out. The note on our tambora, that first string of the tambora is low Shidma. So we should be able to hear when we're perfectly on it. So that's how you know how far to roll your flute. You need to roll it until you get to the Shidma. Much better than the first time I played it. If you have an eighth hole, there's my seventh hole. There's my eighth hole, about 135 degrees down. Not all the way on the bottom. I don't like them when they're all the way on the bottom. Here I can put it up to my thigh, my upper leg. And if I Hit all eight holes together, that'll be should mine. I don't have to roll my flute inwards. When I roll my flute inwards, the pitch is going to decrease. It's going to muffle the sound a bit. Okay? If I play the eighth hole, it sounds a lot nicer. Okay? So if you're sitting down cross-legged, which I'm not, then it's easier to aim and get that should ma, and it'll be full. I will try to play it right now, though. So either way you want to do it. And what do you do if you don't have a 7th hole or an 8th hole? Okay, if you don't have a 7th hole, then just don't go down to Shid Ma. Kumul Da is your lowest note. Come down to the Kumul Da, play around with it, and return upwards. 
When you play the... Yeah, you must play all eight holes. The question is, you have to cover the seventh hole if you're playing the eighth, yes. In a flute, you must cover every successive hole to get any note further down. If one hole's open, you're not getting anything or nothing that you want anyway. Okay? So, I need to, at the same time, I'm going to hit this and this hole. Okay? Because I need to get down from here. Well, even more than that, I need to roll to cover the paw. I need to close all of it. To go from the komoda, I need to roll that to cover it. And I need to hit the seventh hole. And I need to hit the eighth hole all at the same time. Same thing when I come up from it. I need to lift it off my leg and lift the seventh hole and lift up to the komoda all at the same time. All right, that was much better. What's that say? The more you practice it, the more you get used to where precisely the hole is. All right, the question is, if I have a seven hole from the bottom far away, is it Tivrama? I don't think I could generalize and say that every single hole on a flute that's after the sixth hole is a Tivrama, because I don't know what the flute maker had in mind. But theoretically, if it's a Bonsuri and there's anything past the sixth hole, I sure would hope that it's intended to be a Tivrama. But it's possible they just put a hole down there for sonic purposes to improve the timber of the flute what's the timber it's not the tone the timber is the inherent quality of sound of the instrument irrespective of what musician is playing it the tone is related to the musician that's playing it all right so they may have put on a hole down there either to help with tuning or just to make all the other notes sound better and maybe it's not intended to be played at all. Is there much difference between Shudma and Tivrama in the low octave is the question. There is precisely the same difference as with any other Shudma and Tivrama in any octave. I guess it depends on your unit. Frequency-wise, it may be different, but sound, sound-wise, feeling-wise, and um, probably relative distance. Yeah, it's the same as anywhere else. Tivrama is not Shidma. Tivrama will never sound like Shidma. Shidma is precisely four thirds the frequency of Sa, I believe. And maybe if we're going down from Sa, maybe it's three fourths, but I don't think, I don't know if that's right, two thirds, not sure. But to go from Sa, if our frequency of Sa is 100, then I'm pretty sure our frequency of Shin Ma is 133.3333333, etc. Okay? They're, they have a relation. That relation will never change regardless of the octave. Alright. Statement is, while sitting, I can close it with my hip, for example. I'm not sure it would be the it, but I don't know what you're what you're doing and it seems like it turns out T Verma it's quite possible you may have a hole here as I said I don't know what the flute maker had in mind they may they may want this hole closed that may be your seventh hole and it may make T Verma I I think you could make a flute where you don't even have a choice of a T Verma and there's just a hole and if you close it it'll go straight to Shidma so it all depends on what your flute maker was or what your flute maker did, either intentionally or unintentionally. All right, let's move on. Again, if you don't have a seventh or eighth hole, just come down to low da. Most bonsuries do not have a seventh or an eighth hole. Line three. Starts with a Shidma. If you don't have the Shidma, just 
start it on the next note, the Como Da. So let's see what we got. I to have a short line after the comal knee. That means hold the comal knee, just not as long as the other notes. Not like I hold it forever. And I go straight from that comal knee to there's a comal knee in the ornament. That means take a quick breath, or it doesn't mean that, but you will need to take a quick breath in order to do that because you have two knees in a row. Break them with a quick breath. And then you also have more air to play a long saw. All right, so here we are. Next phrase, end of line three. If one of these little pieces you can't play it well, well then practice it over and over. So sunny, hopefully you can play. Gasani sa, gasani sa, maybe a bit harder. So play that over and over. Make sure you can play it. A murky on the saw. What if you can't do gasa ga? Gasa ga. Play it over and over. You'll probably need to use your tongue on the ga because you've got gasa ga, gasa ga. There's two gas in a row. Two, two. Remember, consciously, continuously breathe outwards. We want fluid sound. Don't play one of these little pieces and stop and then play the rest. It goes together. It's all in one breath. Now the end of line three. We have not come to Shib Ma in the middle octave yet. But there was just a hint of it before we got there in the ornament. All right, so from down low, getting from low da up to ga. All right, come smoothly up, ideally. And then masa. Masa does not equal magasa. Masa. All right, there's a mistake right there. Yvonne just caught this. Okay. I need a comal knee right here. This needs to have a line under it. This knee right here. Okay. Good job, Yvonne. There's almost always a mistake if you write out music. This had even been reviewed and a, another mistake had been found and fixed. But this one got by. Anytime you write music, and I sure hope you're writing music, you need to proofread and proofread again and don't be surprised if you find something. So this is a Como Mi right here. It should have a line under it. All right, let's move on to line four. Another Daga. All right. You can play it real slow, you can play it faster. Here's slower.
Here it is faster. Remember, you can play the whole thing without ornaments. Just play the main notes. phrase, line four. I'm not lifting my finger that much to get that maga maga. Samaga maga maga masa. Okay, from ga. I can get that Shidma to come out without too much motion. Maga, maga, maga. End of the line. End of line four. All right. Nida sunny gasani sa. That's a morky gasani sa. And then ma doesn't have any ornament written on it, so just comes smoothly from sa to ma. Mean slide up. Fifth line, maga maga ma. All right, we're gonna show that ma. Spend some time on the ma. Ma's vadi. When you come to ma, spend some time on it. Hold it. Play around with it. Remember that this a lot that I've written out. This is just an abbreviated a lot. Okay, we could spend a lot more time exploring these notes. We don't just have to play two phrases with the ma. We could spend minutes hovering around that ma. Improvising, just coming back to Ma each time. All right, moving on. Maga Saga Sa. Always think about what are the main notes. I know I have all the ornaments written out here. You should be practicing, but the main notes are the important notes. Let's play this with no ornaments. I don't have an ornament written for that Komoga, 
But sometimes when I was playing it, I would ornament it. Not by coming from Ma up to Da. That's a lot of finger motion from Ma to Da to Ga. It's a lot of finger motion. But imperceptible T for Ma. Sama Ma Ga with a T for Ma. Okay, but you're not going to hear the T for Ma. It's just going to be fast. I'm just going to slightly lift this finger from Shud Ma. Lift it up slightly and come down to the Komo Ga. And it gives the effect of a gummock. Imperceptible T for Ma. Or just don't do it at all. If you don't understand what I just said, don't do it. All right, so next line to me. Unzoom this because I like seeing the whole page here. If you prefer it zoomed in like it was, let me know. But I like seeing this page. All right, so we are right here. This is one, two, three, four, five. Line five. All right, so here's a big ornament. Instead of just saw, Dasani Gassani saw. The Gassani saw is like a. Maybe I do need to zoom in. Let's have a vote. Should I zoom in or leave it so you can see this whole page here? And the question is what is the Vadi? Yes, it's Ma. The most important note should Ma. And that's why we hung out on Saw. That's why I spent time on Saw. All right, Dasani Gassani Saw. Real slow. Or fast. A lot more interesting than just playing saw. So there's the whole phrase. Again. I didn't write an ornament on that ga, but you could you could either just smoothly come up from the knee to the ga, neemed, or you can ornament the ga from below, from a saw, saga, you can ornament the ga from above, maga, you'd have to go from knee to maga, right? This ga right here. So either just do neemed, or do an ornament from below, saga, or an ornament from above, maga. <laughs> Next line, fourth line from the bottom. <laughs> Moving on, now let's come up to a Komal Da. Okay, now I'm lacking a line there. Okay, also this needs to be a komal da. Mistake, error. That's one reason why it's hard to trust what you find on the internet. Okay, because you never know if that person made a mistake. And if it's not in a video like this and I'm telling you, hey, there's a mistake there. And you have someone like me to tell you that it's a mistake. Then you may be looking at something you randomly found on the internet. And you may assume... One, that they knew what they were talking about. And two, that they wrote it out correctly. And I know from personal experience, from decades of writing Indian classic music, there will be mistakes. Okay? Ideally, they get found and corrected. But upon first writing, there will be mistakes. 
All right, the Ga as well. All right, Yvonne, maybe you can uh, send me a list of these. There's the Ni, the Ga, the Da. Another Ga. I don't, I don't know what happened here, but there's at least four mistakes on this page with the Komals. But if you have been studying Indian music for long enough and you know anything about the rag that you're looking at, then you hopefully can tell that should have had a line under it. So it's not that big a deal if you know, oh, it's Malcolm's. There's never, ever going to be a should ga or a should ni or a should da in Malcolm's. A bit of that undulin. So here, again, I'm using this other way that I play Komal Da, right? Like that. I usually play it like that. But if I know I'm going to want to undulin or really smooth mean down to it from above, I'm probably going to play it like that because I have a little bit more control like that. Here's this whole line. Also, I want to make clear they're written out in lines only because my piece of paper is 11 inches wide and I have to go to another line. It doesn't mean that what's written on one line goes together and what's written on the next line goes together. It's not like that. In a composition, yes, line one goes together. Line two goes together. But in this all written out, if I had a page that was 10 meters wide I would have written it all out on one line okay That was the first phrase of, of the third line from the bottom. Okay. I don't remember what it would be. I was just sight reading it. Just like you'll be doing. But I wasn't looking at the ornaments. I didn't look at the ornaments. Because it's too much to process. If you're looking at the ornament and the main note. Okay. You can do it slowly and memorize it. And learn it that way. But I know that I'm going to be playing gummocks. Gummocks always work essentially the same way. I'm just adding a note onto the other note. And usually... My gummocks are coming from above. So I just looked at the main notes. Da, ma, ga, sa, ni, da, ni, sa, ga, ma, da. Just going straight down the scale and straight back up. And I put a ornament on each note. But if you don't know your ornaments, then yeah, look at them. Go real slow and play them as written. Memorize it. Understand it. And then you can play it a bit faster if you want. Introducing Komo Ni for the first time in the middle octave. Ni da, ni da, ni da, ni. Hold it. First time you've come to it, show the new note. Second to last line. Ni da, sa, ni, sa, da, sa, ni. go slow and really show the ornaments or you can go fast and the ornaments are just barely noticeable. Your choice.
I often do a phrase like this, not just in Malcones, but in lots of rock, something that's, it drops back down into the lower tetrachord and brings me up to the note right below high saw. And it feels like I'm going to go to high saw, which I am going to do. I'm preparing to come up to the entra. I'm preparing to bring, to come to the high saw and hold a long high saw. Like I almost always do when I come to the entra. End of the second to last line. Alright, there's not an ornament written on the high saw. Use the mean to come up from the knee. Why would I purposely leave an ornament off of that high saw? Because I haven't introduced the high saw yet. I don't want to introduce a note higher than high saw. So, just use the mean to come up to the high saw. You could do it. You could ornament the saw however you want. I just decided not to do it because I had not yet introduced anything above high saw. All right, the question is in the gummock, the top note you are showing are supposed to be in comal. You always ornament with notes from the raga that you're playing. Or there are few alwayses and few nevers in music, but generally speaking, you should gummock with the notes of the raga. So all these ornamental notes are sa, comal ga, ma, Komal da, komal ni, because those are the notes of the raga. And if I were to zoom in here, then what you'd notice is komal notes. Notes from the raga. Okay, so we have finally arrived at the antra. We started at saw, we went into the low notes, we went down as far as we can on our flute. General rule. Start at saw, or a phrase that brings you to saw. Go down to the lowest note that you can hit on your flute, or the lowest, lowest note that you can nicely hit on your flute. Return to saw, work your way up, build up a little suspense coming to the high saw, and then come to the high saw, hold the high saw as long as you can, and then I'm going to play one more line, and then I stopped writing the aloft. You're just going to follow the same basic concepts move into the high octave and then return to the high saw and descend down to saw. Play a nice long saw to end the allot. All right, so here's the last two lines together, final two lines together. So, second to last line, I came to that high saw. Then I improvised down and came back to another long high saw. I almost always am going to play at least one long high saw. To come to the entra, I've come to the high saw. Now I'm going to improvise return to the high saw. I'm not in a hurry to leave that high saw. I want to make sure everyone knows I'm in the high octave. And they people will consciously or unconsciously know. Okay, they don't have to understand music. It feels like you have returned to a note of you are you have arrived at a note of importance, which you have. Okay, so my good speaker has died, unfortunately. Let me plug it in because I don't like the sound. This is if you notice this change in sound quality, then you should realize that's what happens when if you're just playing your tambour out of your phone. I've never heard a phone, regardless of how modern it is, that has a nice sounding speaker on it. So let me plug this in so we can get some good sound coming out. All right, let me play this last line.
All right, so this line has a lot of notes and a lot of ornaments. I didn't have to look at the ornaments because I know what the ornaments are going to be because it's just standard gummic procedure, which is use the note above the note that you're playing. If you want to gummick all from below, you can. Okay, I've trained myself to generally use gummicks from above, so that's what's going to come out when I play most of the time. All right, so I don't have to think about the gummicks. I just know I'm going to ornament from above. Nida Magasani. Okay, go straight down. Nida Magasani. And then Saga Mada Nini Dani Sa essentially brings me up. Alright, that's called a flash. It's like I played a ton. Full speed. Just momentarily though. And then come back to that high saw. Denisa, Denisa, Denisa. Nida ma, my body, and then Gama Dani sa. Improvising, still focused on the high saw. Use all those notes below you. You've already introduced them. Feel free to go fast through them, go slow through them. Okay, play a flash if you want. Go real slow if you want. Come back up to the high saw. Play a long high saw again. You're still showing the high saw. Now when you're ready, you're going to move up. I don't have anything written out for this. Let me stop my screen share. Hey, let's see who's here. Welcome, Morley, Rush Mahanu, Capiche, Sunny Tushar. All right, so the Alap is not done. I've arrived in the Entra. Now I'm going to go up into the high notes. I'm just going to improvise for a bit using the same basic concepts. What's one of the major concepts that you just saw, aside from the one I've repeated? three or four times that I always repeat that you ascent, you start with saw or a phrase that comes to saw, you go down to the low notes, you come back to saw, you go up to high saw, you go up as high as you want to go above high saw, you return to high saw, and you descend back to saw. A nice long saw that fades out, like I said at the very start, we like our notes fading out if they're long notes, fade out in volume. What's the other thing we saw? Almost all the notes have ornaments. That's why I teach ornaments. Gummick is the simplest ornament. It's just one note added on to another. All right, but we did see some other ornaments, more keys and more complex ornaments that don't have names. All right, that was saw. Saw was the main note, but it was a lot more interesting than just saw. Dasani Gasani Saw. Sama. Gama Gama Gasa. Gama 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 Sa. Sani Sada Sani Gasa. Gasani Sa. Morky. Gasani sa, gasani sa, ma with a nice mean up to the ma. (laughs) 
Magama. Nida. Sunny, sunny. Saw's the ornament on every one of these notes that I just played and I'm about to play. Alright. Hi, Saw was the ornament. Sunny, sunny, sada, sunny, 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 sada, sunny, sunny. Okay. Bouncing, my hands essentially just bouncing up and down. Dasa. <laughs> Flash. Gagasani Dani Dama. I can't remember what I did exactly. Gagasani Dani Dama Gama Gasa Gama Dani Sa It's like an eight beat ton one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Gagasani Dani Dama Gama Gasa Gama Dani Sa And you don't have to come straight to the Sa Gama Dani you can hang out build a little suspense Gama Dani Sa mean from the need of the saw all right so that's a flash just make it up all right let me just play around in the high octave a bit and then return to saw return to the high saw a little bit of waver on the komoga all right, you can do it with your finger, you can do it with your breath, you can do it with a little bit of roll, you can do it with all of them together. Come to Ma Sagasa Ma Maga 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 Masa Maga Masa Gani Sada Damada, Damada. Not like that. Wave. Ma down to da, ga down to da, sa down to da. Dasani, Dasani Gasa Ma, Dani Sa Ma, Ni Sa Ma, Dani Sa Ma. In Malcones, a lot of times you'll come Sa Ma, okay? You can go Sa Ga Ma, you often do go Sa Ga Ma, but sometimes Ni Sa Ma, Dani Sa Ma, Ni Sa Dani Sa Ma. All right, so I've chosen to not go up above high ma. That will require cross fingering. I could, you could keep going up, but let's just call it good on the high ma. Return to the, uh, play a long high saw. Okay, return to a nice long high saw.
And now slowly down to saw to end it. If I want, I can briefly drop below the saw and come up to the saw. But whatever it is, I'm aiming to get from high saw down to saw. was I away from Saw for like 15 or 20 minutes, okay? I was away from Saw for 20 minutes. When I return to Saw, everyone is going to know consciously or subconsciously that that's the end, all right? Sometimes beginner flu players, they'll like return to Saw and then they'll kind of keep going and it's like, ah, eh, why did you keep going? You'd already ended it, it sounded like. So I don't think there's any need to continue from there. Uraga, yes, but the Alop, done. Now, you could start up with Jor or move into your composition. The slower, if you have multiple compositions, play the slower of your compositions. If you only have one composition, then start. So you're just going to start playing the composition. The Tuttle player is probably already putting their powder on their drums and starting to kind of tune their drums, they know that your lop is done and that you're going to start up the composition unless you just start a jaw. Okay? I've introduced some rhythm. Okay? What note? Saw. Same basic pattern, saw, low notes, saw, move on up, high saw, high notes, high saw, down to saw, done with the jaw. okay? Starting out real slow, eventually a little bit faster, okay, or more notes. It may be the same tempo, but there's more notes, not just saw, saw, okay, more more activity the longer you're playing. And then if you want to play a jala, play a jala. The jor can either just blend into the jala or you could end the jor and then start up a jala. Jala. I went all the way up to Ima. You don't have to get all the way up so fast, but you can. You can do it even faster. Sometimes I'll just... You don't have to always hang out at Saw for a long time. Go down into your little low notes for a long time. Come back to Saw for a long time. You don't have to do that. You can compress the whole thing. Alright, enjoy your bike ride, William. Alright, 
So that was a little bit of Jor and a little bit of Jala. When I finish the Jala, theoretically, if I have a tuple player and a composition to play, I would play it. If you don't, then you're done. A lot. You could just play in a lot done if you wanted. That's not too traditional. A lot, Jor and Jala, done if you want. But theoretically, you've got a drummer there and you're going to start your composition. All right, any questions? Is a lot a little bit more clear? If anyone was here yesterday, as I said, yesterday we took the same piece of paper and we just imagined there were no comal notes written there and we just played it as being a shudja. Everything should. All right, because the concept is going to be essentially the same. There are other Sagama Dani Sa Ragas too. We could probably do the same thing. I think that's all I have for you. A lot ornamentation, keep it slow, make every note come out in the correct pitch, have nice sound as far as your tone goes, consciously, continuously breathe outwards, think about the overall structure of the lop. Where are you in the lop? Are you in the low notes? Are you in the middle octave? Are you in the entra? What note are you focused on at that moment? All right. You can play a note. You can use other notes. Keep returning to that one note that you're focused on. Is how I usually do it. I usually have one note. This this is the main note. I may be improvising all around, but I'm going to come back to this main note until I'm ready to move on to another focal note.